The only thing better than having it all is me not coming back next season. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Raphael and I am here to review episode 16 of The Real Housewives with the nerve and the audacity of Beverly Hills. We start the episode off with some gaslighting between Dori and Kyle. They're both driving around town looking for a reason for Dori to stay on the show any longer for next season. Dori, she's with her dog Winnie. She's like, oh my bosom, my baby. <laughs> Are you excited, my baby? Yes, we're driving around town. I'm going to give you some nice doggy treats, my baby. And then this is where the BS starts because she tells Kyle, Well, you know what, Kyle? I just feel like with Lisa Renna, you know, her reactions have been a little bit extreme. You know, they, they've been a little bit too much and I'm a little concerned. And I'm like, huh, so interesting, Dory. So you're concerned and you see all of this. But yeah, just like that, right? It's quiet. But every single time you see it, it's just like, mm. Do, 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 do. Nope, I don't see any reaction. But yeah, here you see it all of a sudden and now you want to have a conversation and you're so concerned. But in the moment, it's just like, yeah, I don't see it. <laughs> Kyle, who, you know, Kyle already from the very beginning of this episode, there was some BS. Kyle is like, yeah, I understand, you know, with Lisa Renna and everything that she's going through and, you know, how she's coming off and everything. I understand it because, you know, her mom passed away and she's still dealing with all those emotions. And I understand it because my own mom passed away and, you know, she's making it about herself. She's like, so I get how all those emotions could affect your actions and stuff. And I just feel like with Lisa Renna, we have to give her some lead way. And I'm like... <laughs> okay, Kyle. So then she continues on by saying, yeah, well, Lisa, you know, I feel like just people need to be a little bit more understanding of her and just need to give her some time. And I'm like, but Kyle, how many more of these attacks can Sutton specifically withstand before, you know, somebody's just like, okay, enough, Lisa Renna. Like, I get that you're going through this and it's very unfortunate. I, like I said, I feel for Lisa Renna and everything that she's going through. But at the same time, that is not an excuse for you to act like an ass to somebody else on this show. And Kyle is just like, okay with it. Like, yeah, Sutton, can you just be, can you just be Lisa Serena's doormat for like a couple more, you know, attacks and stuff, and then she'll probably get over it. No, Kyle, that's not how it works. Sutton or whoever else Lisa attacks on the show, they also have feelings as well, and you're just okay with that just because Lisa, you know, she's going through it right now. Again, like I said, I feel for her, but no, that's no, that's no explanation of her acting like a monster these past, what, three, four, five hundred seasons? <laughs> Not episodes, but seasons. And then the re, the re, you know, the re is so close to being on the right side of things sometimes, but then she like she makes a quick U turn. <laughs> Like, maybe if Garcella Sutton had, like, a, a Louis Vuitton flag or something, maybe she'll hop over to the right side. But she's like, well, you know, I feel like, yes, we need to understand everything with Sutton right now. And, you know, how Lisa's constantly going after her. But, and I'm like, well, here we go. We lost her. <laughs> she was so close. But then she had to add that but. She was like, but I just feel like with Sutton, she doesn't really explain herself a lot. She doesn't really explain herself really, how you say, articulate. You know, she doesn't really explain herself really articulate. And then, you know, it's just she just brings it upon herself. And I don't want to feel like it's a pile on. And I'm like, so if you don't want to make it feel like Sutton's getting piled on, how come you don't say anything to your own friend Lisa or Erica or Dirty Diana or even Kyle? How come you don't say anything to any of them when you say right here, you don't want it to be a pile on. But what do you do when you're right? there when the pile on is happening you're quiet you're mute so i don't understand dory like make it make sense please kyle again contradicting herself because she's like yeah with with Sutton, i want her to speak up but you know i just feel like sometimes she says too much and it gets her in trouble and sometimes she doesn't say anything and then it gets her in trouble and i'm like kyle with you specifically or honestly with anybody on the cast who's not garcelle or maybe even crystal they're all gonna have a problem with Sutton, whether she opens her mouth or not it's specifically you the second that Sutton even has said anything this whole entire season who's the one that has the number one issue on the show about it you do so uh, you don't want Sutton to speak up because the second that she does speak up you can't handle it lisa can't handle it dirty diana can't handle it neither can erica handle it neither can erica's bank account handle it so it's just like what exactly do you want out of Sutton? and i don't understand it you just you want her to be quiet you want her to say something which one is it i'm not understanding then we head over to garcelle's house where her guest coming over is diana out of all people i'm like diana she comes in garcelle opens the door and i'm like garcelle it's okay if you close the door back <laughs> like just say hi really quickly and then slam it <laughs> And then we can move on to the next scene. But Diana, she comes in wearing this red jumper. She has a, she has it on backwards, apparently, because she's still a little tipsy from the night before. So they sit down. The, uh, Garcelle is like, Diana, I saw all those pictures that you were posting about you, Kyle, and Kathy. Why did Kyle and Kathy look crazy in the pictures, but you look nice? And honestly, yeah, I, I do the same thing as Diana. <laughs> Like, if we take a group picture or a picture with me and my friends, and I'm the only one who looks nice in it, that's too damn bad. It's being posted anyway. <laughs> yeah. 
try posing better next time. But they're sitting down, they're laughing about that. Diana, she's like, yeah, Garcelle, like, you know, I had a lot of it. I had a lot to drink and, you know, me and my tongue, we just, we got really, really tipsy. And it was, it was just a lot, you know, it was a really wild night, but I, I like to have a, I like, I like to have a good time. So then she proceeds to tell Garcelle, like, yeah, I'm so excited for this Aspen trip. You know, Aspen is like my happy place and I can't wait to go, but I'm going to be staying at a hotel by myself. Garcelle was like, wait, why? And then this is where it gets sketchy because, you know, Diana already, she's already had a sketchy past according to the online, but she goes on to say, yeah, you know, I just need people to like, you know, really know the whereabouts. I need to know where I'm staying at, who's around me, what's around me, what's going on around me. And I'm like, hmm, I don't know. You know, allegedly, I feel like Diana is is running away from something because there's just no way that she's that paranoid that like, you haven't stayed with these women at all in any trip i believe she's always like secluded herself and so obviously she has some type of trust issues with the women she obviously feels like hmm you know i can't let them in my life too much because they might uncover something allegedly you know i'm not sure if it's true or not but i don't know her behavior is very sketchy especially when she pushes it and she's like yeah i actually have ghostbusters come around the places like the hotels and stuff that she stays at to inspect it for spirits and i'm like uh, yeah, that's a little bit too much. You know, I, I get it. I, I don't know. That's just a little bit interesting, a little bit strange to me. You know, it's, it's a little weird. <laughs> Diana, she goes on to say, well, Garcel, you know, this conversation between me and between me, you and my tongue, we wouldn't really be having this conversation if Sutton was here, but I'm trying to be open about it and I'm trying to see if she's a bad person or a good person. And I'm like, Diana, how many more times do we have to continue this rehearsed thing between you and Sutton? Like, we get it, you don't like her. You don't even have to pretend to like her anymore. Just let it go, especially from what we see later on in the episode. We don't need you to pretend anymore. Just say that you don't like the girl and that's fine. Garcelle, I mean, I don't know. If I was Sutton, I would be looking at her a little sideways. Like, wait a minute, you're over here having my enemy at your house? No, no, no. Like I said in my Atlanta review, if I don't like the bitch, you don't like the bitch either. And that includes your house. <laughs> so the second that she would have knocked on the door, you should have just turned the lights off and said, nobody's home. <laughs> But that was that. But now that we're on the topic of Garcelle and Diana, let's talk about everything that's been going on on the social media these past couple of days between Jax and Garcelle and, you know, these bots, these, these fake Instagram accounts or whatever that have been attacking Jax on Instagram and saying some crazy, insane, racist stuff to him for no reason. I'm like, what is going on here? I mean, you know, prior to Diana even joining this cast, you know, the Housewives franchise, they have their way of being, fran uh, not the, the fans, have their way of being racist towards certain Housewives, right? So that's nothing new but the fact that you know everybody's just like piling up on Jax and I'm like what is going on here so apparently everybody thinks that it's either Lisa or Diana specifically Diana especially with everything that's been going on with her Garcelle you know her son and Erica to some extent too they think that they hired all these bots or bought these bots to go after Jax Jax he put out a public statement through his mom Garcelle Garcelle is like stop even Bravo put out a public statement saying you know we really need to stop all these these uh, negative hateful comments and stuff and it's just becoming too much you know I've said it before like, do not go to any of the housewives, any of them, even if you don't like them, do not go to any of their pages and go and attack them. Do not go, do not purposely look up like Lisa Rinna's account or, that, or Dirty Diana's account or even Garcelle's account and go to their comments to say bad things about them. Don't do that. It's so uncalled for. It's mean. And it's just like, stop it. That includes their children too, for all of them. It's just very uncalled for. And you just shouldn't be doing that. It, I get it that you can have your opinion because I have my opinion and I voice it here on camera, but I don't go to, you know, any of the wives pages like, oh, check out my video and see what I said about you. No, I don't do that. So, you know, nobody should be doing that. Like, let's just stop because the comments that I was reading about Jack, really, really disgusting. Now, to think that Erica, Dirty Diana, or Lisa is behind all of this, I mean, I don't know, honestly. And maybe this is just me giving them a little bit too much credit, but I just feel like they wouldn't be that dumb to do such a thing because you know that there's some, I'm pretty sure that there's some type of way to come back to whoever's account or whoever, uh, you know, hired these bots to go after Jack. So I'm pretty sure that there's a way to do that so why would they put themselves in that risky situation i feel like it's either the fans you know the racist fans out there who's doing this or i mean if i really had to put my money on one of them i would probably say it's i would probably say it's lisa renna because erica jane she can't afford bots <laughs> Dirty Diana, I don't think she even knows how to, you know, work her phone. <laughs> so I think that it'll be Lisa Rinna, if anything, because I feel like she'll just do anything at this point just to, you know, continue some type of storyline or some type of flow on this show. We head over to Lisa's house where she's with her husband, Harry, and she has a bunch of her mom's memorabilia after she passed away. She's showing him and, you know, it's interesting because even though Lisa Rinna has been a monster these past couple of episodes or these past couple of seasons, honestly, I still managed to find a little bit of sympathy for Lisa because I, I don't know how it feels to lose your mom. It must be a real 
really hard thing to go through. I can only imagine your emotions are just all over the place, especially with all these cameras filming you on a daily basis. You know, you have to kind of keep it together instead of breaking down in every single scene. But I just wish that Lisa Rinna had that same compassion and that same sympathy for Sutton, you know, because that's been her number one target ever since, uh, you know, Lois's death. I just wish that Lisa Rinna would look at herself in the mirror and say to herself, you know what? My mom probably wouldn't approve of this behavior going after Sutton and trying to hurt her feelings every other episode. Maybe I should dial it back. Maybe I should just be quiet. Okay, maybe I don't like her. My best friend here, Erica Jane, and her are having an issue and she doesn't like her. Maybe I shouldn't like her either. But you know what? Let me just say to myself because I have my own feelings and my own issues right now that I'm going through right now. So I'm just going to process it by myself and leave Sutton out of it. You know, it would have it would have even been nice if you if we would have seen you go to a therapist and try to process this whole situation yourself. But no, what do you do? We have moments like this with you, you know, you were, where it's supposed to be touchy and it's supposed to be sympathy from the audience for you. But then two seconds later, what did you say the last episode? I am aggressive and I don't care. I am aggressive. So it's just like, which one is it? Because this was always you even prior to your mom's passing. So it's just like, this isn't a new side of you, Lisa. This is not you like, oh, you know, I'm going through so much. So I'm lashing out. No, you were lashing out even prior to anything going on with you right now. So it's just like, you can't use it as excuse. It's just you in general. That's who you are. We head over to Kyle's house where her and Mauricio are playing golf outside and he's trying to get his balls in the hole. All of a sudden he tells Kyle, so about this Aspen trip that you and the ladies are going on. So guess what? I'm coming too. I have to go. There's just no way that I'm letting you and all these women go on the Aspen trip by yourself. I'm coming too. And I'm like, why? Like, like, what's the contribution? I don't, I'm not understanding. Why is Mauricio coming? Like, I don't get it. He's just like, oh yeah, there's so many, uh, there's perfect skiing conditions that I have to go to ski. And I'm like, if you want to be a housewife, just say that. <laughs> This is where Mauricio turned into Maria. I'm like, Maria is trying to hold a diamond so badly for next season. If you want to be the center's diamond, just say that, Mauricio. Like, what's going on here? It's already bad that, what's his name? Sergio from the Housewives of Dubai. He's already trying to be a housewife over there. But now we have you too. Like, for what? Again, what are you going to add to the trip? Nothing. So stay your ass out home in Beverly Hills. Don't you have like an agency or something? Go sell a house. <laughs> We head over to Doree's house and she's packing up for the trip to Aspen. She's with PK. She's talking his head off. She's boring him to death. She's like, PK, so guess what? So in the house that Kyle got in Aspen, so Kyle, Erica, and Rena are going to be staying in one house. And in the other house is going to be me, Sutton, Garcelle, and Cherie. We're going to have a slumber party. Oh, and, and Dirty Diana, she's going to be at a hotel somewhere down the street. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that, but I can't wait. We're going to do our hair. We're going to talk about boys. We're going to talk about my fake robbery storyline. Oh, I can't wait. And maybe, I don't know, we might talk about Mauricio, but I don't know. I'm not sure, but I'm so excited. I'm really excited to tell scary stories too. And I'm like, I'm, like, I'm looking at PK on the couch and I'm like, I know he probably gets tired of hearing Dory over and over and over just talking about nothing. <laughs> Like, she goes on on these long tangents for what reason. I'm like, I can see why he goes to, you, to, to, uh, to where is it? The, the England or the UK? He probably goes over there just to go. <laughs> it's probably no work business, no work meetings, nothing. He probably just goes over there to vacation away from Doree. Doree goes on to tell him, you know, PK, after the robbery situation, and I'm like, wait a minute, we're still on this? <laughs> You know, because I still think it's a bunch of bullshit. I still think it's a bunch of lies and fairy tales. And I'm like, we're still going on with this? I thought she let this go like a couple of episodes ago. She's still trying to make this a thing. She's like, you know, after the robbery, I just, I just, I'm really hoping that I can move forward. And I don't have to have these feelings every single night of, you know, feeling like I'm being watched or feeling like something's going to happen to me. You know, I feel like... I think I'm very strong enough to move forward. You know, uh, what was that song that Cher sang? I'm strong enough to live without you. Strong enough. And I feel like I'm really strong enough to move forward and maybe kind of leave this in the past. PK, again, he's sitting on the couch like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, honey, we get it. We came up with this fake storyline together. Now you're pushing it. <laughs> and cut. <laughs> But she goes on to say, you know, allegedly, like, she's trying to move forward. She's fine now, blah, blah, blah. But I did find PK to be a little heartless when she was like, oh, you know, if something happens or whatever, if I call you from Aspen and I tell you to come pick me up, you have to be there for me. PK was like, uh, no, don't come at me with the bullshit. <laughs> He said, I'm going to be in, in, uh, in the UK, in England, over there living my best life, drinking some tea. You don't call me at all because you did that while, while you were in Mexico. And I'm sick of it. Like, leave me alone. 
<laughs> I'm like, damn, PK, okay. I mean, you know, for somebody who allegedly went through something so traumatic recently or whatever as Dori, you know, it hasn't even been a whole year or whatever. And PK is just so heartless about it. Like, uh, yeah, I'm going to be in, P in the UK. Leave me alone. Peace. <laughs> We see Crystal Sutton and Garcelle packing. Garcelle, she's at her house. She calls up Cherie, right? Cherie's also packing because she's coming to the Aspen trip. Why? I'm not sure because she doesn't add anything. Are we ready to admit that Cherie's a flop? I was so excited for her to come onto the show as Garcelle's friend. Like, okay, she's going to have another friend on her alliance. She's going to have somebody in her corner. But Cherie, Cherie's just there. I'm just like, what's going on? She's like equivalent to Moneta from the Real Housewives of Atlanta. She's just there just to be there, just to take up space. She doesn't add anything to the show. I mean, they could cut all her scenes out and I'll just be like, oh, okay, nothing happened. We'll continue. <laughs> But Garcelle, she calls her up and she's like, hey, Cherie, so, you know, I'm really, I was really upset the other night at the disco party at Erica. And honestly, if she was on fire, I probably don't think that I would throw a bucket of water on her. I would just let her be and that's that. And I'm like, wow, you know, because in California, the water situation is serious. So for Garcelle to say that, yeah, that's pretty serious <laughs> because a bucket of water means a lot in California. Cherie's like, really? I mean, you have to do something. You have to at least spit on her. And I'm like, wait a minute, what kind of kinky shit are you into, Cherie? <laughs> Let's not get a New York versus pumpkin situation going on in Beverly Hills. Let's not do that. But Garcelle, she's like, no, I'm just done with her. That's that. And, you know, I think the, I think the door on that friendship is kind of over because if my friend was to say that, like, oh, yeah, I wouldn't, you know, throw a bucket of water on Raphael. I mean, I would feel some type of way, you know, like, seriously, like, really? But, okay, I guess she's done with Erica for now. We then see Crystal call up Garcelle and she asks her, so, Garcelle, have you been seeing that article that's been floating around online about Erica Jane having to give up these earrings that she has? I believe they cost seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars and i'm like oh crystal look at you 16 episodes in you know you're a little late but look at you finally adding something to the show <laughs> I'm like, $750,000 for some earrings? What do they even do to cost that much? Does it come with a car and a matching house? Does it give you superpowers, the ability to fly? Like, why do they cost so much? That is way too much. So Garcelle is like, uh, well, I mean, I kind of had to, you know, because at the time she was on the show, The Real, and they have to talk about pop culture and everything that's been on the news and on The Housewives. So Garcelle is like, well, I was kind of forced to talk about it, but the episode is not going to air on TV for Erica Jane to watch. So for now, me and her, we could get along in Aspen <laughs> until after the episode comes out then she might be a little bit upset <laughs> So then Crystal, again, better late than never, she tells Garcelle, well, you know, with the price of those earrings, you know, I know people are trying to repossess them for some, some of her legal activities right now, but I feel like with the price of those earrings, she could actually pay off some of the victims, some of the alleged victims. And I'm like, ooh, Crystal, look at that. Again, 16 episodes in, you know, that's all it took. <laughs> but then she blows it in the confessional. She's like, oh, well, you know, with Erica Jane, I learned to mind my business. You know, if I want to know something and she doesn't want people to know, she's not going to say anything. And if you ask her, she's going to fire back at you. And I'm like, Crystal, why are you scared of her? I, I do not understand why any other women on this show are scared of Erica Jane. This is why I could not be a housewife because every single scene that I would have with Erica, it would just be a new question. <laughs> Like, oh, hey, Erica, hey, yeah, let's sit down for drinks and a donut. So how are you? So did you do it? <laughs> like, absolutely not. Like, she, I don't get why she has all of them shook for some reason. Like, they cannot say anything. They cannot talk about any of these articles. I know Crystal talking to Garcelle right now on the phone. I know after she got off the phone with Garcelle, she was probably like, I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I talked about Erica behind her back. Like, I know she was probably so scared. I'm like, why? She's not going to do anything to you. Well, the most she's going to do is call you names. And even then, who cares? Like, you can fire back at her. It is what it is. Like, absolutely not. Every time I would have seen Erica, I would have been like, so did you do it, Erica? Were you behind the whole thing with Tom? How many times did Tom actually flip his car? Did you know what he was doing? Did he buy you those earrings with the victim's money? Like, no, 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 absolutely not. It'll be question after question after question. But again, she has them shook. We finally get this Aspen trip on the go, and I'm like, here we go. You know, I know from here all the way to the reunion, it's about to be an entire shit show. So all the wives and the friend of the show, you know, Kathy, Cherie, Maria, and the dog, they hop on this private jet plane. The, the jet plane looked really, really nice. They had snacks, it had food, it had everything, right? So they get on it. Erica Jane, here she is in the confessional, and she's like, you know, I can't wait to go to Aspen. Aspen is just so luxurious. It's such a beautiful place. That's where all the people with money, you know, with coin, that's where all, that's where they all go, you know, just, just to have a good time. And I'm like, uh, it's just a place with snow. Relax. <laughs> She's making it seem like it's this, it's this huge paradise hotel or whatever. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a hater because I've never gone. <laughs> Maybe I actually need to go to Aspen to experience this luxury that Erica Jane is talking about. And you know, Erica, as soon as she was done with that confessional, she was probably like, yeah, I don't have any of that anymore. <laughs> 
And what's funny is that she's describing Aspen to be everything that she's not anymore. She's like, yeah, it's so luxurious. We all know that Erica, she's no longer luxurious. She could barely afford a she by Sheree Jogger say. She goes on to say, yeah, it's so expensive. We all know that she's not. it's not expensive to be Erica Jane anymore. I mean, unless you're talking about her lawyer fees, then yeah, that is expensive. And she goes on to say, yeah, you know, Aspen is where a bunch of people with money and a love this huge luxurious lifestyle go to. And we all know that she lives in a tree house. So, you know, yeah, it's just, it's pretty sad at this point what she's become now she also goes on to say you know before back in the day i used to go to aspen on my own private plane and i'm like yeah again in the past what do you have now because you could barely afford a taxi to aspen let alone a jet plane now but you know it's nice to have memories <laughs> We finally get to Aspen and everybody splits up into their own house that they're staying at. In the main house, we have Lisa, Erica, Kyle, Maria, and Kathy. In the guest house, we have Dorit, Garcelle, Sutton, and Cherie, and Crystal. And somewhere over there somewhere is Dirty Diana. <laughs> She's staying at a hotel and, you know, I said it before, but her money just does not impress me. I thought it would, you know, having all this money, this luxurious lifestyle, but no, she kind of just bores me. She's over there somewhere thinking like, oh, yeah, I'm on a throne. I'm on a pedestal. I'm over here by myself. I'm cool. I'm different. And it's just like, yeah, you could go back home. <laughs> like, it's not impressive. She's over there like, yeah, I'm keeping them away from me. And I'm like, yeah, you could keep the audience away from you as well. <laughs> like, just get off the show. But back over at the main house, we have everybody over there, Maria. She's getting the bar. Well, he's getting the barbecue ready because they're going to have this big barbecue, right? So eventually, Kathy shows up. Kyle, she's like, oh, come on. I'm going to show you to your room. Ky Kyle, she leads her to this room that has a bunk bed in it, right? <laughs> It has two bunk beds, and she's like, oh, yeah, look, 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 this bed is comfortable. This is where everybody likes to stay because the bed are so uncomfortable. Kathy's looking at this like, what's a bunk bed? <laughs> she's like, is this what poor people sleep on? What is this? What's going on here? Where, where's the king size bed? <laughs> And then she lays on it, and I'm like, yeah, this is very new to Kathy, but okay. Again, Maria, she's outside cooking some barbecue. She's, I believe she's cooking some steak. Eventually, Garcelle and everybody in the guest house, they all arrive in the main house. Dirty Diana as well. They're all helping out Mauricio. Mauricio, he catches some type of attitude because Kathy's like, oh, can, can we get some corn? Can we fry some corn too? Like, put some corn on the, on the thing or whatever and fry that or whatever? And then all of a sudden, Mauricio, he's like, yeah, you could do whatever the fuck you want. And I'm like, wow. I mean, okay. Hey, fine. Let, let me see myself out. <laughs> if I was Kathy, I would have been like, you know what? Nobody wants to eat your shitty steak anyway. It doesn't even have any seasoning on it. <laughs> and then throw it at him. <laughs> I'm like, wow, okay. And then that was strike one. And then strike two was when Kathy was asking for a bunch of stuff. She was like, oh, Kyle, uh, what steak should I get? What steak should I get? Where's the silverware? All of a sudden, Kyle was like, um, does it really look like I give a shit what steak you eat? And I'm like, Kyle, what's going on here? What's going Is this how we talk to our siblings? Is this what's going on? What happened to customer service? <laughs> It was so uncalled for, but then again, we saw a sneak peek of Kyle's behavior towards Kathy at the disco party when she tried to interrupt her conversation with Sutton and Kyle got upset at her. So this is kind of like, okay, so this is strike two of you. So this is how you treat your sisters? Because we obviously saw how she treated Kim all those other seasons. So now she's moving in on Kathy like, hmm. Okay, so this is where it begins. Interesting. So after they get done eating Mauricio's dry steaks, they all go into the living room to relax and sit down. Lisa Rinna, out of nowhere, she brings out a Ouija board and I'm like, absolutely not. I was with Cherie. Cherie was like, no, 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 no. I'm not doing that. I'm not playing around with that. And me growing up in a, in a Latino household, I was always told to never play around with that type of stuff because me, I believe in all of this. I believe in spirits. I believe in all of that. And it's true, y'all, because it's pretty scary. But Lisa Rinna, she brings it out and they're like, oh, we should play something. We should play with it. We should all play with it. I believe only Lisa and Erica wanted to actually participate and touch the Ouija board. And I'm like, you see, both of your lives are already cursed. Why would you want to add spirits to it? <laughs> like Erica Jane, you already have like a million legal cases again against you why would you want ghosts coming after you <laughs> and then kyle you know kyle kyle this is one of her many 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 red flags this episode because she just cannot control her producing she was like so maybe we should ask the ouija board you know if, if everything is going to be resolved within this group at the end of this trip and i'm like come on now like kyle's producing on the show has become so stale boring and predictable like it's not even fun anymore because she's just so obvious with it like let garcelle do the producing because you kyle yeah you kind of just ran your course on this show at this point because i do like you but now you just ugh. you know even dory uh, erica and lisa were kind of annoyed at you like okay like why are you trying to start that type of conversation here and stir 
the pot. Obviously, everybody's having a good time. And yes, we need drama on the show and here and there, but it's going to come organically because obviously the tension is high between the group. So why would you even want to instigate anything? But of course, they go on to touch the Ouija board. And if I was sitting there, I would have been like, uh, no, can we ask a different question? Can we just ask if Erica had any involvement in Tom's legal cases? Yeah, let's touch the Ouija board. Yes. <laughs> The spirits would have been like, yeah, 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 to every single question. <laughs> so then again, Kyle with the producing that has become stale. She's like, okay, wait, 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 maybe you should ask a different question. Okay, are you ready? Okay, are you ready? Because I've been waiting all day to ask this. Um, maybe we should ask why Garcelle unfollowed Erica on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, I did that. And I'm like, Kyle, ugh, again, just oh, so boring and so predictable. So boring and so predictable. <laughs> Erica is just like, I'm a 51-year-old woman. Why do I care if somebody follows me on Instagram? Who cares? And we see in the flashback that Kyle tried to press Erica earlier on the jet plane. Like, oh, you know Garcelle unfollowed you, right? You know Garcelle unfollowed you, right? You know, already setting traps to try to instigate some type of fight. Some big blowout. So what? So she could turn around and point her fingers at Garcelle. Like, why did you start this? Knowing damn well that Kyle, that's exactly what you were trying to do. You were trying to start something at the... You were trying to start a whole domino effect at this little gathering in the living room. So then Garcelle is like, yeah, I mean, I unfollowed you because, you know, I just don't like that you called me a liar. Erica's just like, well, I called you a liar because I just don't think that you genuinely care about me and this whole alcohol issue. You're just trying to make an issue. And then when you saw that Dori didn't give you a reaction, you got mad about it. So you went to Kyle. She didn't give you a reaction either. So you got upset about it. And I'm like, Garcelle got upset with what? Like, what? I must have missed that episode. <laughs> Garcelle's like, ah, no, that's a stretch. I wasn't upset or anything. I actually told you to your face about this whole situation. So I don't know why you think that I was repeating it to everybody. Yes, I did do that, but I also talked to you about it. Erica, she's like, when? <laughs> And those flashbacks, they show when Garcelle had that one-on-one -on -one sit down with Erica. But again, Erica, she must have had one too many cocktails to remember because she's like, yeah, I don't remember that. Kathy, she stepped in. Kathy, she was annoyed at this whole conversation. I'm like, why are we talking about this? Kathy's like, you know, there are three things that I hate being called. I hate being called broke. No, 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 that's not one. I hate being called a theft, a thief, a liar. And I don't think I could say the last word on video. So we're just going to say pedo. And I'm like, that word came out of nowhere. And I'm not sure if she was trying to be shady towards, you know, what's her name? Dirty Diana. But who knows? Allegedly, you know, I'm not sure why she said that. But side note, that is a pet peeve of mine when the housewives unfollow and refollow each other on Instagram. Typically, it happens right before the season. Their season is about to start. I don't know why they do that. That's such a thing. I don't even know how people find out about that. Like, is there an app or something that tells you like, oh, so-and-so has unfollowed so-and-so? Like, I don't understand that. It's just like, okay, Okay, if you're gonna unfollow them, leave it at that. Or better yet, just block them. That's what I do. I just block them. And I'm actually petty because if you unfollow me and I follow you, I unfollow you. But I go through your pictures and I take away my likes. <laughs> So Garcelle tells Erica, you know what? I'm okay with not being your friend at all. Erica's just like, yeah, me either. It's fine. You could give me some money every now and then because I don't have any, but I'm okay with not being friends with you. So they come to a truce, right? Kyle, this is what pissed her off. She was like, wait a minute. They were supposed to have a, a huge blowout. Like I was supposed to instigate this whole fight and neither one of them fell into my trap. Like what happened? This is what had pissed her off. So she couldn't take it. So then she started spiraling out of control. She became unhinged for no reason. I'm like, Kyle, it's not that serious. You and your cowboy hat need to relax. She's like, you know what? No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. So, you know, she just came out with something out her ass because she's like, okay, if this is not going to work, I'm going to produce a fight. She's like, no, I just don't understand Garcelle. You unfollow Erica. And then Sutton, she told me again, dragging Sutton into this for no reason. She's like, Sutton, she told me that it was supposed to be like a little joke. And both of you were laughing about it behind her back. And I don't like that. And again, I repeated the scene like three times in order to understand. I'm like, what is Kyle upset about? She's upset at Instagram that Garcelle and Sutton unfollow Erica and that they're laughing about it like that's what she's actually upset about like that's what you're actually banking a fight out of Kyle like it's pretty pathetic like it's, it's a whole new low for Kyle I'm like this is what you're making a fight out of even Dorit Dorit had the common sense for like five seconds <laughs> to say wait a minute Kyle is making a fight out of nothing because she's trying to what She's trying to stir the pot. And I just wish that Doree, Erica, and even Lisa would have called out Kyle. Like, Kyle, you're doing way too much right now. It's so obvious. Please stop and reel it back. But, so then Kyle, she's like, yeah, I don't really find it funny. I just don't understand why both of you were laughing at that. Like, it's it's a bunch of bullshit. And I'm like, again, you're upset for what? Like, it's so interesting that she finds, she she thinks that this is crossing the line. But her, Doree, Mar uh, Maria, and PK, they could all laugh about, oh, Erica, she told uh, Jax to, you know, get the fuck out. Ha ha ha. It's so funny. It's so, that is hilarious. 
hilarious, right? You could laugh at that. It's so funny. Erica, she just needed to let her hair down. But here, a, a quick unfollow on Instagram. That's where Kyle loses her shit. That's where she has standards. Okay, but she decides to get up. She's like, you know what? This is bullshit. I'm leaving. No, this is bullshit, Camille. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. And she's walking away. And I'm like, uh, okay, what's going on here? Like, <laughs> Like, it's insane to me. Like, what, you're upset because Erica's gonna have two less likes on her pictures? Like, okay. Sutton is trying to explain to Kyle, like, the reason why I unfollow Erica is because she called me a see you next Tuesday at the reunion. So what do you expect? Again, Kyle's not understanding that. She walked away. And then Sutton, she makes her case again. She's like, I just don't understand why nobody in this group was stuck up for me at the reunion when Erica herself called me a see you next Tuesday. Lisa Rinna. You know, she, she finally opens up her mouth and she's like, well, why do we have to? And I'm like, okay, like, <laughs> this is obviously going to be another pile on on Sutton. And it's just like, okay, so you obviously see no wrong with what Erica just said to Sutton. But okay, so Sutton is just like, I just can't believe this. Like, everybody's just okay with, with Erica calling me a see you next Tuesday. And then Dirty Diana decides to stick out her tongue. And she's like, well, it's because you are one. And I'm like... <gasps> I'm like, yikes. I'm like, wow. And you saw, you even saw Lisa Rinna for a slight second have some type of emotion. Like, even she couldn't believe it because if you pan over to her, she, she has that look of shock in her face. Like, wait a minute. What? You, you did not just say that to Sutton. Like, you saw it in Lisa Rinna's face. And you know that that's where Diana had crossed the line. And Sutton, Sutton looked like she was just two seconds away from having a full on breakdown and crying in front of everybody. I mean, she eventually did. But right there, you could tell that her feelings were really hurt because Sutton has been apologizing to this woman for like a hundred episodes now for no reason reason. I mean, I keep telling her not to do it, but she continues to do it. And Diana, for her to make that slick comment, meanwhile, Erica, she's just cackling and laughing. Ah, that is so funny, Diana. Oh my God, that is so true about Sutton. Ah, so funny. Ah. If I was Sutton, I would have went down the line with each and every single one of them. Like, if I'm going to get my feelings hurt, then everybody in this room is going to cry at the end of the night. <laughs> like, we could have a big slumber party just crying. <laughs> And what did Candy just say on the Atlanta episode? She said, I'm not Michelle Obama. When you go low, I'm going low with you. So I would have took a page out of Candace from Potomac's book and I would have been like, oh, Diana, you want to fix your mouth to say that I'm going to see you next Tuesday? Okay, well, so is your mom. How about that? Like, I know it's probably like a something low, but you know what? You're going to be low and you're going to throw low blows at me? Fine, I'm done apologizing. I'm going to actually hit you where it hurts. And that's that. I'm going to talk about your mom. And it is what it is. I mean, again, if you want to play dirty and it's going to be a giant pileup, then so be it. Erica Jane, I don't know why you're laughing because you're two cases away from being in jail and behind bars. So if I was you, I wouldn't laugh too much. If I was you, I would actually return those earrings that you owe. Stop the laughing. Dori, yeah, the whole fake robbery situation, I never believed you. I think that you're a liar and you just came up with this because you need a storyline for this season and guess what you're probably not going to be back next season and you're pretty pathetic kyle mauricio is never going to emotionally fulfill you like <sighs> shereen yeah <laughs> crystal that's why we know your husband for the lion king and we don't know who you are <laughs> I would have just went after everybody. Like, absolutely not. Like, I cannot believe that Anna really fixed her mouth to say that. Like, and she's just laughing. Erica is just laughing uncontrollably. Garcelle is like, that's not okay. That's not okay. That's so not okay. No, no, that's definitely not okay. Like, it's not okay. And she's the only one that said, yeah, I don't really like when other women use that see you next Tuesday word against you, uh, against each other. I just don't like that personally. And yeah, it's just, again, nobody said anything. Kyle, what did you just say at the beginning of the episode? Satin never really speaks up. She never really speaks up. And look, this is probably why she doesn't because she tries to speak up. Nobody heard her. Nobody cared. You didn't care. And then when she actually did speak about well, like, why she did what she did with the whole unfollowing on Instagram, what happens? Diana throws a slick comment at her and everybody laughs and nobody said anything and you just stood there stuck with your cowboy hat. Garcelle continues defending Sutton and she's like, Diana, stop it. Like, that's really mean right now. You shouldn't have ever called her that. She has feelings right now. Diana, she becomes unhinged and she loses it. And she's like, does she though? Do does she have emotions though? Is she a real human? Is she a real... Is she a real person? Because she attacked me at your birthday party. She came at me when I was bleeding. When I was bleeding. And I'm like, Diana, where are you coming from this? And, you know, again, I'm not the biggest Sutton fan at all. I'm not on the bandwagon with Sutton at all because I still look at her a little sideways for last season. But, you know, I just don't understand what Diana's case was. I'm like, Diana, you have came at Sutton. I mean, yeah, the only time I actually agree with Diana was when Sutton came up to her at Garcelle's party. And she was like, why are you here? You're supposed to be on bed rest because, again, who the fuck is Sutton to, for you to be ordering me around, whether I'm lying or not? Who are you to come up to me and ask me that? So that's the only time I've ever sided with Diana. Other than that, Sutton has pretty much had, you know, the 
leg up on Diana. So I don't get what her argument was about. And then Kyle. Oh, Kyle. See, if I was Sutton, I would have slapped the taste out of her mouth. Like, Kyle was like, Sutton, it's okay to defend yourself. <laughs> like, Kyle, you have some fucking audacity. <laughs> <laughs> to tell Sutton, it's okay to defend yourself. When the second that she tries to defend herself, what are you going to do? You're going to jump down her throat and say, Sutton, why are you being so mean to Diana? Why are you trying to defend yourself? <laughs> like, Kyle is scary when she talks like that. It's, just, it's almost like she doesn't hear herself or doesn't see how she acts. Sutton, again, her face, she just looks like she's about to cry. Her eyes are getting glossy. Everybody's still in silence. Diana, she's going on this rant about, you know, who knows what about her and her tongue saying, oh, you know, Sutton is this, that, and the third. She's mean blah 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 and again she just told Garcella a second ago at her house that she was gonna try to give her a chance but here she is Sutton didn't even say anything to Diana and Diana unprovoked just called her a see you next Tuesday for no reason so I don't get what she was getting at again if you don't like the woman just leave it at that you could be cordial you don't even have to say anything just like Erica and Garcelle they came to a conclusion like we don't we're not friends and that's that you could have been the same way with Sutton but no you wanted to be petty and call her that now if Sutton would have said something about you or would have actually took it there you know Sutton, what you need to do, somebody, somebody please contact Marlo Hampton <laughs> from Atlanta and have her talk to Sutton and, you know, and get her ready for the reunion for next week because Sutton, like, we can't just continue you just being somebody's doormat. This is why everybody on this show, specifically Kyle and her squad, they know that they could just run over you so easily because look, like, you just stay in silence and you don't retaliate. I mean, obviously, not everybody's going to retaliate. Not everybody has that oomph, you know, to fire back at that. But it's just like, you know, at some point you need to say something because they're just going to constantly try to knock you over. And I just don't think that that, be, that makes it a fun show for Sutton specifically because how do you even come to work and you already know that you're going to be ambushed by like four or five women every single time? That must not be fun. Garcelle, she could only do but so much defending. You know, she could only say but so much before they come after her. And even then, Garcelle has to relax and she has to, you know, play up this whole image like she can't do too much because then they're going to put a stereotype on her. They're going to twist everything around and put Garcelle in that awkward position like, oh, wait a minute, you're coming off too angry. You're an angry black woman. So it's just so much that she can say and so much that she could do with defending herself or you. So it's just like the whole cast just needs a whole shake up. Andy Bravo, you need to divide that group of Kyle, Dorit, Lisa, Erica, and Diana. Like something needs to happen. This cannot continue on to next season. Diana and her tongue get up and they're like, you know what? No, I'm done with Sutton. That's done. This whole conversation is over. I'm leaving. I'm going back to my palace. So she gets up and she leaves. Erica, she follows right behind her. And you know, Erica was just gone because she wants money. <laughs> She's like, wait a minute, do you need an assistant? <laughs> Meanwhile, Sutton, she finally breaks down. She's crying. I mean, she's crying uncontrollably. We couldn't really see her because Kathy was in the way. I'm like, Kathy, move. I'm trying to see if she's crying or not. But Sutton, you could hear her in the like in the audio and stuff. Like she's crying. Kyle, of all people, she's sitting next to her, like, it's okay. It's okay. Like, just holding her and stuff. And then Kyle again had the audacity in her confessional to say, Well, you know, Diana, I mean, what she said was pretty mean, yeah. But you know what? I can respect it because at least she's being honest. And I'm I'm like, oh no, Kyle. <laughs> oh no, Kyle. Somebody needs to go. <laughs> Like, this is ridiculous. Like, what? Like, Kyle, like, how do you sit there in the confessional and say that? Like, oh, yeah, Diana, what she said was mean to Sutton. But you know what? I could respect it because at least she's being honest. Yeah, she's being honest. But then when Sutton or Garcelle tried to be honest, you jump down their throats. Like, no, no, you can't, you can't be that honest. But you could be this type of honest. So it's just like, it's just a mess. It's just a ridiculous mess. And Bravo, Andy, they need to divide that click up. They need to add somebody else to the cast. I saw an interview floating online of Kamora Lee Simmons be an interview and ask, oh, would you join the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills? And she didn't say no. She said, ah, I mean, they call me every now and then, but I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe not. I would love to see Kamora on the show. I mean, I would love to see her on any of the cities, honestly, but I would love to see her on Beverly Hills. That would be nice to see. And if they're going to keep the same cast with Diana and all of them for next season, no. Somebody needs to get Jennifer Tilly. Get Jennifer Tilly because that's Sutton's best friend. I love Jennifer Tilly. Get her on. Get like 20 of, of Garcelle's friends. Get like five of Sutton's friends. <laughs> Like, if you're going to keep that same cast and it's going to constantly be like, what, five versus two? Yeah, we're going to need extra, extra backup on Garcelle and Sutton's side because this is crazy. <laughs> like, it's becoming toxic at this point. Like, what is going on? It's just always going to be a pileup after pileup after pileup. And next week, it just continues spiraling out of control with Erica Jane. What does she say? I don't give a fuck about anybody but me to Crystal. And then she just goes off on a tangent. And we all know that her versus Kathy is coming for some reason. I'm not sure how that develops, but... It's just, 
Woo, it's just a mess. This Aspen trip is about to be a hot ass mess. And again, the reunion films next week and Sutton, you really, really, really need to bring it. Like you need to bring receipts. You need to you, even call Monique, call Monique Samuels from Potomac, you know, call her and give her some, you know, get, maybe she'll give you some tips on how to write a book or something. And maybe you can expose somebody at the reunion because no, you cannot continue just coming to the reunion or going to these places with these women and just constantly apologizing like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wouldn't be surprised if by next episode, she meets up with Diana and she's like, oh, you know, I want to apologize for you calling me and see you next Tuesday. <laughs> like, I wouldn't be surprised at this point. But that was the episode. Let me know what y'all thought about the whole episode down in the comments. Oh, and one more thing. You know, the Salt Lake City, the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City trailer just dropped. That looks interesting. Potomac. I know Potomac is around the corner too. And best believe we will be talking about both those cities. But for now, let me know what you thought about this whole episode down in the comments. Bye, everybody. Mwah.